Hi everyone, and welcome to this video. In this tutorial, Julia wants to create social media posts, and she's hoping that AI will help her, so we will be helping her to create 10 different social media posts. So she has already defined the title of the post and the appropriate channel. Now, what Julia wants is for the AI to do the rest of the work. So she wants the AI to also suggest the optimal tone, create an outline, and generate some keywords that are relevant for this article. And last, but not least, she wants to draft the final article. So let's have a look at how we can do this. Let's log in to make.com and open our scenario builder. We will start with the Google Sheets module because that's where our list is. As in our previous videos, we will look for get range values to load all data from our sheet. We first set up the module and connect the right file. I can see my social media post right there. Now just to select the right sheet. Let's then select the right range and specify where the headers lie. I know my headers are in the first row, so I will make sure to specify this here. Great! Let's test the module now to see whether we are getting back the values that we are supposed to. I can see that we are getting the right values. So, let's proceed to building the AI part. We will start by generating the keyword for our blog. We look for Open AI and the action called Create a Chat Completion, which is essentially like sending messages to ChatGPT. Here, you can notice we already have our connection set up, but if you are struggling to set up yours, go back to our earlier video, which shows this in depth. Great, let's move on to setting the necessary details. You can leave the method on Chat Completion, which is again the same as when you are talking to ChatGPT. Then you select your model. I like to choose the GPT-4 Omni because it is a fast option that is cost-effective, but you could also go for other options like the chat GPT-4. Then I select the role. In this tutorial, we will be working in two different roles, first the system role and then the user role. Why we do that and what's a system role has been explained in more detail during our video about data enrichment, but to sum up, we use the system role to give context and the user role to give instructions. If is sometimes useful in scenarios like this one to keep the context separated because it is being gradually built, but it's not mandatory. You can use just the user role too. So to build our context, let's use this prompt. You're a social media marketer for automation platform make. Your goal is to write a social media post on the channel. This post has this title. And I then insert the title from our Google Sheet. You're tasked to write a social media post on. And I insert the channel. The last thing is just the part about giving the context about the right audience and mapping it there. That's all for our system context. Now in our user message, I will insert my second prompt. Return back 10 keywords that would help to make the article rank high on SEO. Make sure the keywords are relevant to the title. Don't return anything else than the keywords. And then just include the example output. If you're curious about writing a good prompt, I recommend you to go back to your lesson on prompting. Great. Let's now define the max number of tokens. Here, I'm returning back keywords only, so I don't expect this to be a real long message, so I can just put 300 tokens, which is quite a low amount. Just a reminder, tokens are a currency for OpenAI and any other similar provider. And that's it for our first module. So now it's time to create a second module, but before doing that, let's rename the first module. I like to do this when I chain apps from the same providers so I can quickly find which module returns what. I think keywords is an appropriate name for that module. And now for my second module. 
I'll search for the right action from OpenAI and start setting it up the same way as the previous module. I can just copy the context from before. That's why it's very useful. I'll first select a model and then copy-paste my system prompt. And I'll just add one more thing. I will add the keywords that I generated in my previous module. So let's add the keywords into our system prompt. We can then move on to the user message. In this message, I'll be asking the AI to return back the right tone for the article, which would make the blog resonate with the brand make. So I'm trying to personalize it even further for my use case. Again, I don't forget to include an example of the output, which in my case gives back a tone that is optimistic but professional, needs to be informative but not too long. And that's it for this one. Finishing with renaming the module, and I am all good for this one. Let's add the third module. In this module, I'll generate the outline. So let's set it up the same way as the previous ones and add the system context. I can again add the system context from the previous module, but on top of that, I will also include the tone in which I expect to write the article, which will again help me to go step by step in building this article in the best way possible. Great, that's it. So as to the user prompt, this time it will be a little bit longer, but that's just because of the example output I'm asking for. So return the outline, which should not be too long. Specific is better than general. Make sure the outline reflects the title, tone, and we can't forget the audience. I then specify that want my outline returned in the bullet points, and then I give it an example of an output. This time, you can see the output might be a little longer, so let me specify a higher number of tokens. And I'll rename my module to say Outline. So that's it for this one, and let's get to our final piece and generate the article. Let me set it up first. Once again, let's use the system context from the previous one, except this time, of course, we also have an outline, so I'll just paste it in. When mapping the outline, I take the result from the previous module. Great, let's go to the user message. Write a post based on title, tone, keywords, and outline. Be brief and authentic. Again, reiterating not to go too far. Don't return anything else just the post. Don't include any symbols like the two asterisks, which is what the AI often does. And that's it. I will give a little more leeway with the number of tokens, and I'm all set to go. I just need to rename my module. Let's call it the post. Let's give it a go and try to run this. And I can see that everything is going smoothly, but my Google Sheet is not being updated since I didn't configure my module. So the last thing that I need to do is to update our original Google Sheet. Once I find the right module, I need to set it up. I look for sheets that have been shared with me and then select the one I need. Let's wait until the rest loads up. Great. Now just to specify the right sheet and map the row number. Since we already have the title, the channel, and the audience, there's no need to do anything about those. Let's now add the keywords. And then we went on by to obtain the tone. So we'll just map it there. And then we obtain the outline. And then the blog post itself. So that's it. Let's save it up and run the whole scenario.
Amazing. I can now head back to my original Google Sheet because I can see that my scenario is running without problems. It also seems that my Google Sheet is reflecting the new updates, so that's great. You can see that by now, we are already combining quite a lot of knowledge from the previous videos, and we are able to generate social media posts in seconds. This will hopefully help you and Julia scale your social media campaigns and become unbeatable. To take this case even further, you could connect your social media directly as the last module and post it there straight away. Or, you could automate the creation of titles and audience for the posts, so you don't have to write those manually. But that's up to you. This is all for today and looking forward to seeing you in the next videos.